For some, he's the greatest of all time. For others, he's not quite the best of his generation. Whatever you think of Cristiano Ronaldo, there's no denying that he is one of the most decorated players the game has ever seen. But is the sun setting on his glittering career? Are we witnessing the beginning of the end? Today on Football Reality, we're looking at CR7 himself and asking, are we witnessing his final season in top flight football? It's over a year now since Ronaldo's second stint at Manchester United began, after one of the most high-profile returns to any club in football history. Departing Juventus, there were question marks about a £13.5 million deal right from the start. Did United only put in a bid because he was about to sign for Manchester City? Did Ole Gunnar Solskjaer want him in his team? We may never know the answer to those questions. But what was certain was the Old Trafford crowd finally had one of their true heroes back. Ronaldo initially joined Sir Alex Ferguson's United squad in 2003 as an 18-year-old for £17.1 million from Sporting Club, whom he'd scored five goals in 31 matches the previous season after joining the Sporting Academy in 1997. The legend goes that having exhibited his skills against United in a pre-season friendly, Red Devil stalwarts such as Roy Keane and Paul Scholes came off the pitch and told Ferguson he simply had to sign the youngster. From there, Ronaldo spent six seasons in the Premier League, establishing himself as one of the league's greats, joining the 100 club, winning three titles, both cups and, in 2008, the Champions League and his first Ballon d'Or, the most recent winner of the award when playing in England. He departed in 2009 to Real Madrid for a then world record £80 million where in nine years he won a further four Ballon d'Ors, a further four Champions Leagues, won a hat full of titles and cups, and scored 450 goals in 438 appearances. Not half bad. Joining Juventus in 2018 was seen by some as a step down, but 101 more goals in three seasons proved Ronaldo was still every defender's nightmare, even in such a famously defensive league. In the meantime, Ronaldo became the top scorer in international football, and won two major trophies with Portugal. He is also the top scorer in officially recognized matches in the Champions League and in the Euros. He is the only player to score in nine consecutive major tournaments, in four Champions League finals, and at least 10 times in the Champion League for three different clubs. If there was a record for holding the most records, Ronaldo would probably hold it. With all that in mind, there's no surprise there was still so much interest in Cristiano in the summer of 2021 when he announced his intention to leave Juve, despite being 36 years old, with a return to Real Madrid as well as heading to City being rumoured. But in the end, the superstar's heart led his head, and he returned to the red half of Manchester. After United had finished second in the Premier League in 2021, Ronaldo's 18 goals were exactly what Solskjaer's side needed, as they went on to win a first title since 2013. What? They finished sixth? Well, yeah. Despite Ronaldo's 24 goals in 38 matches in all competitions, United finished last of the Big Six and were trophyless, as Solskjaer was sacked and replaced by Ralph Ranić, who oversaw a rotten end to the campaign, prompting the United board to bring in Eric Ten Hag for this season. But at least Ronaldo's performances kept the team going, and without his goals, they would have really, really struggled, right? Okay, you can see where this is going. It depends who you ask. Many fans and pundits have seen the second coming of Ronaldo as United's saving grace, especially with so many of those goals last season being late winners. Others point to how at times he went missing, particularly when the going got tough for United. There was plenty of negativity surrounding his outbursts on the field too. Ronaldo was visibly frustrated with teammates on multiple occasions during the last campaign, when things didn't go according to plan. Something we'd only really seen before when he was playing in less talented Portugal teams. This frustration boiled over in April after defeat to Everton. Ronaldo was charged by the FA for knocking a fan's phone out to the ground as he walked past. Such improper conduct had never been seen of Ronaldo before, leading to some suggesting he was no longer cut out for football at the highest level. The controversy didn't take a break over the summer either. Ronaldo failed to report for preseason training in July, which United put down to family reasons. But the rumor mill was circulating, 
and it appeared that Ronaldo had asked to leave United just 11 months after rejoining. His car being spotted at Sporting's training ground hinted at another heartstring tugging move to a former club, but almost every day a new club was seemingly in the running to get his signature. He was linked to Premier League rivals Chelsea and to Diego Simeone's Atletico Madrid. A move back to Italy wasn't out of the question either, with Napoli reportedly interested. What about the super elite clubs? Bayern Munich, PSG, Real Madrid, etc. Surely they would bite your hand off to have one of the true greats in their ranks. Actually, no. Despite all his records and talent, these clubs decided that they were not interested in CR7. Wages aren't exactly an issue for these clubs, so why would they not want him? Maybe, just maybe, Ronaldo's time at the very best clubs on the planet has come to an end. In the end, he announced that he would stay put at Old Trafford. But Ronaldo did not exactly endear himself to new manager Ten Hag during his one and only preseason appearance. He played 45 minutes against Rayo Vallecano, then left the ground before the end of the game, which Ten Hag called unacceptable behavior. Ouch. Not exactly love at first sight between these two. For the opening Premier League match of the season, Ten Hag left Ronaldo out of the starting lineup against Brighton, but brought him on to try and save the game. It didn't work and United lost 2-1. Next up, Ronaldo played the full 90 minutes against Brentford, but the match was a disaster for the Red Devils, suffering a humiliating 4-0 defeat, with Ronaldo a passenger for much of the game. That was, in fact, the only time he's played a full league match this season. Ten Hag dropped him for the Liverpool game, which began a run of four straight victories and counting. Cristiano has come off the bench in all four of those wins, only once getting more than 30 minutes, and he's yet to score or provide an assist. His only goal in a United shirt this season was in the Europa League against Sheriff Tiraspol. It's clear that Ronaldo quickly dropped down the pecking order at Old Trafford, and he's yet to do enough for Ten Hag to return him to his starting eleven. Instead, the Dutchman is sticking with Marcus Rashford, who looks rejuvenated after a poor 2021-22 season. Up front, with Jadon Sancho, an exciting new acquisition Anthony on the wings, and captain's armband wearer Bruno Fernandes in behind. With this formation already looking so settled, it's hard to see when Ronaldo is going to get a proper run in the side. No matter who you are, if you aren't playing regularly at age 37, you aren't going to be staying at the top for very long. Fortunately for Ronaldo, possibly, there is a chance to leave in the January transfer window. Some of the same names are being linked. Chelsea are still rumored to be interested, but maybe Graham Potter won't want to work with him. The option to return to Sporting Club is still on the table, if you believe the rumors, and said rumors also claim he wants to play Champions League football which would mean a maximum of 16 options come January. But after two wins from two so far, Sporting could well be in the knockout stages. Or perhaps Victoria Pleasant will thrash Bayern, Barcelona and Inter reach the last 16, and Ronaldo will head for the Czech Republic. Stranger things have happened. So what do you say? Is this campaign Ronaldo's last in the top league? Is it all downhill from here? Or is this just a minor blip and he'll be back scoring for fun for Man United really soon? Let us know in the comments, subscribe to Football Reality, and see you next time.